good? Sup. Dope. Great. How are you, Lisa? I'm well. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, everybody, welcome to Andre Loves Everybody. This is your host, Andre Gazetta, and I'm joined today by Lisa Ann Chinu. Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Um, so, Lisa, I like to start this podcast by telling everyone something that I love about them. Okay. Um, first of all, I have to say, I remember the very first time I met you, I was guest hosting Trapped with the Comics. At the Lexington. At the Lexington. Mm -hmm. And you got there real early, and mm -hmm. you waited a really, really, really long time to yep. go up. And all these people were going up after you, and I was like, oh, shit, she hasn't complained. She hasn't talked to me. She hasn't talked shit. Uh, I should see who this person is and apologize and leave the bucket so that they <laughs> can get up. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's not, no apologies necessary, but thank you. No, I was just like, I was really impressed by your, you know, your positive attitude and the fact that you weren't feeling, you know, entitled or getting frustrated or anything. So I was like, that's really cool of her. Um, and I also have to say, I really appreciate how much you support other women in comedy and how you're kind of trying to uplift women all the time. I think oh, that's really thank dope. you. I also love talking shit on people. So it's, it's nice fun. to know that people see the positive. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, yeah, I was also going to say I was looking at your website earlier and I love that the contact section specifically requests that people, quote, uh, keep it chill on the late night Facebook messages, please. <laughs> yeah, I um, I've had like not just comedians, but like bookers message me at like three in the morning, and I'm like, even like I know you're not. It's just, just don't like. It's weird. if I'm up and you don't want me to answer right now. You know, I'm either yeah. drunk or like exhausted. Yeah, I prefer just like you know between seven a.m. and. That's when I wake up. Yeah. Between 7 a.m. and like and 10. 10 p.m. That's yeah. fine. Those are great. Those are very available hours. Hey, before midnight, I'm going, it's fine. That's pretty good. And it's okay if it's a show tomorrow and you're scrambling or whatever, but. Oh, yeah. I forgot to give you the never, flyer. It right? never is. It's yeah. always like, do you want to do this next month? And it's like, why are, are you drunk? What are you doing? Like, <laughs> why? I always get a lot of hey by oh. drunk. Those are People, guys. fun, super fun. Yeah, no, yeah. it's never women. It's never a woman. Well, sometimes it is women. That's the, oh, really? And it's not hitting on you. They're just disorganized. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, cool. Um, so what we're going to talk about today, what you kind of pitched me is that you were previously engaged mm -hmm. and then you, it kind of changed how you date. So can we start off by you telling me, um, a couple of my questions are like, what's the story like how long ago were you engaged okay. and how long were you dating this person for and like what sort of ended it so if you want to okay. give us kind of a preview um well my I dated my ex for six years and that included that includes the time that we were engaged which I think was like two or three years um and this was three years ago that we broke up okay so and three years and change but um, and we moved here together, which from where, um, from, we lived in Arizona before, but okay. I'm originally from Texas. Okay. So it's all very confusing. Um, I, I have heard since that moving to LA with someone is like a curse, but no one ever oh. told me that. Um, but I could see, I mean, I started comedy after, um, we got engaged and after we moved here and I could see how that would be difficult, like adjusting to that lifestyle. Also, like just there's just so many factors. Like when your rent doubles, it makes everything harder. Everything like stressful. moving here yeah. from Arizona, like our rent doubled in overnight, you know? Yeah. And also like he was working a lot. And I think we just ha we just had a lot of problems that we never fixed. How long did you live in L.A. for before you broke up? Um... I think two years. It's oh, hard wow. for me to like figure it out timeline wise. I'm really bad with time. Like <laughs> whatever. It I'm all really just blends bad with together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I think two years we were here. I mean, we definitely renewed a lease. Okay. So it was definitely over a year. And what like who decided to move here? Like, why did you guys want to move here? If you hadn't even started comedy yet, I guess that's what I'm asking. Well, I think I was interested in it. And I also had this idea that, like, you could just come to L.A. and, like, write a resume and get a job as, like, a TV writer, which is not the case. <laughs> so I think I was, like, kind of pushing us. 
and then he got a job opportunity here. So oh, nice. his job like ended up actually moving us here. But I think I looking back, I think I definitely like put the idea in his head. OK, so you've been here for five years then in L.A.? Yeah, something like that. OK, what sort of in, in terms of the relationship, like how did things start to come apart and like. You know, I mean, being engaged for three years is kind of a long time. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, was that a point of contention or? that We did not, like, see each other. He would work, like, 15-hour days and I would go out and do comedy. So, like, the last few months of our relationship, we rarely saw each other at all. And I think, like, we would go on trips together, but it was just, like, kind of like we wouldn't even talk. We'd just, like, hang out and get drunk or, like... We go do stuff. I mean, you can do stuff with anyone, yeah. you know, and I think towards the end, it was just kind of, I mean, I broke up with him, so it, I, maybe it seemed out of nowhere to him, but I don't think it did. He also like struggled with alcohol and like, I don't want to disparage him in any way, but there were a lot of other factors in our relationship that didn't make it easy. Yeah. Where it's like, if you're drinking all the time and you're like, I'm coming home and I'm like checking how much alcohol is in a fucking bottle before I talk to you. Like, that's a problem. That's definitely a huge problem. And like, <laughs> I, and, but the, I don't want to, I don't want to make it about him because I also like ended it and didn't, I didn't say that when I broke up with him, you know? Yeah. So. I mean, so how, cause like I also had, I was engaged to someone, mm-hmm. kind of similar situation, a little bit different. Um, he and I, had started dating in college, like near the end of it. And we dated for like almost five years. Um, And it had been something where like, there was a point in our relationship where I really wanted to marry him. And I was like really in love with him. Um, But by the time he proposed, he pretty much proposed because we were breaking up. Yeah, I can see that. So it was kind of like a last resort. Was that also your experience? No, we, I, When we got engaged, I mean, I have jokes about it and I try to make my jokes more about me than about him because that was also an issue. Um, But it's also like it's my life and I don't you don't get to censor me. I'm sorry. Women get censored enough. Like there's no they're just I'm sorry. That's not going to (laughs) happen. But I try to keep this stuff mostly about me. But I think when I was just young when we got engaged and I was just how old were you? I was 20 or 21. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. What? So it's like, I, yeah, I You're don't. You're a whole other person. Now. Yeah, I don't yeah. like. I feel that way Think too. that for any reason that I, nobody has any business getting engaged at that age. My brother you got know? married at that age. Yeah. It was a working out. Uh, for him, not for the rest of my family. He doesn't talk to my family anymore because of her. So, so like, yeah, yeah, I think some of those issues come up and you're not able to deal with them because you're so young and where I don't know your brother, but it seems like maybe if your if he had a little bit more experience with these things or like certain he would be able to talk to your family about it and get through these things where yeah. when you're young, you're just like, I'm dumb. I'll just do this and like hope it works out. And yeah, for I, sure. it definitely didn't, you know, and I'm glad that I didn't stick around longer. Wait, so you guys started dating when you were like I was in college. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. OK. Yeah, that's a yeah. The, I think about that a lot and I will sometimes get hit on by younger dudes. And I'm just like, I'm so much older than you in terms of experience. No, like, yeah. I, like you're nice, but no, I can't. There are certain men that have a m- maturity and stuff, but especially in L.A., you just find that they are more self-centered, which makes them less likely to, like, evolve in uh, mature in a certain way. Yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Mm -hmm. Um, So how did that, I guess I'm wondering, too, then kind of, like, what lessons did you learn from that relationship, and how did you take them into dating again? Because dating in L.A., I've found, is really fucking awful. It's really bad. It's (laughs) awful, too, because you have, like, this weird scarlet letter of, like, Anyone that wants to have a serious relationship in this town, I mean, they're few and far between, but anyone that does, when you tell them like, oh, I broke off an engagement, they're like, oh, she's afraid of commitment. So everyone already just thinks you just want to be like a fuck buddy or, you know what I mean? Oh, really? Yeah, that's that. I usually don't tell people I've been engaged. I I mean, you have to kind of wait, you know, until you're like trying to get serious with someone. And like, I mean, I'm lucky because in my current relationship, it came up when we were talking about someone else and I was just like, Oh, well I did that. 
Like, so oh, like he mentioned something about someone about someone breaking off an engagement, and I was like, oh well, I don't judge it. Like I've done that, and then it was like, oh okay, well now we have to have the conversation. Yeah, I mean, how did your current? How many? First of all, like how soon ago? So how soon after that engagement did you meet the boy who's currently your boyfriend? I met him probably like nine months after I broke up with my ex. Um, but we started dating like maybe almost a year after. Okay. So you kind of yeah. knew him, you saw him as a friend and then kind of he, mm. it became a relate. or you saw him as we an We started acquaintance. sleeping together pretty quickly, oh, okay. but yeah. Okay. I don't know if I would say friend, but yeah. I don't know if we've ever been like friends until we started like dating. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like you kind of knew about him or something he um runs a show called the chatterbox on sundays at nine and his co-host was a close friend of mine okay so i had seen him around doing comedy and stuff um and then we met at a party cool yeah nice fellow comic yeah comics mm-hmm. you have anything to say about that i've oh i mean it's um i would say it's the best most people hate it i i think it's the best at least it's easy somebody gets it I, we aren't competitive also. That's nice. It could be That's harder really if you're in a same sex relationship. I can understand how um, that would be more difficult because you're going up for kind of similar things mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think dating in a same sex relationship obviously has other struggles <laughs> besides yeah. comedy related stuff. Um, but for me and him, it's like not very competitive. That's really nice. And I, yeah. Oh yeah, go ahead. Well, we've been doing comedy different lengths of time and like he has other stuff and I have other stuff. We we try not to get jealous and we can complain about all of it together. That's really nice. Yeah. I've had, um, in Milwaukee, I dated a comic and it would sometimes be problematic in terms of like jealousy where I would just be like, can't you just be happy for me for this? You know? And it, yeah. and he had been doing it a little bit longer and I think he felt a little bit more entitled to certain things. And I think that being in a relationship with him, um, and me basically just being like, you're not really entitled to these opportunities and it's not okay for you to feel this way. Yeah. He's definitely evolved and grown as a person. Cause like, since we've, you know, yeah, near yeah. the end of our relationship, he got a lot better about that stuff. Um, but it, it can be really difficult. It so. definitely can. I think that for me, it's like, I want so like, I would love so much for him to be successful and like, like, you know, like. I would prefer for him to be successful and like for me to just be able to just do comedy, like <laughs> for him to be able to pay for everything and like have a great job That's would super be super funny. And I think he feels the same way. So it's like, yeah. like I think we're both just kind of like, whatever, if you get something, hopefully that means I get something. And if not, right. like at least you'll be able to pay the bills. Well, I think in a relationship, like your partner's joy should always be your joy. Yeah. Like if they're achieving something or if they're doing it well, like that makes, that should always make you feel good. I've never understood like competing with the person that is supposed to be your teammate, you know? Well, that's how I feel about women too. Oh, for sure. Where it's like, I know that we don't get a lot of opportunities and it sucks when you see someone get something that you think you deserve it hurts everyone feels that way but also know that that means that that person's opening a door for women and hopefully they're a connection for you and can get you into that space and like I know it sucks and it feels competitive because there aren't that many spots for us and we're growing and the more women show that we're funny the more people will allow us to be funny so that's how I feel. I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. I'm always like, and the truth is too, is like, I would much prefer to give a spot to a woman or to recommend a woman because I know so many shows that just don't have any women on them. And I know so many funny women. Yeah. And I'm like, how about we just don't hear about dicks for a whole set? Yeah. What if that happened? Wouldn't that be cool? Well, not my set. You'll okay. be hearing about dicks for sure. I mean, <laughs> or like some no, horrible, I, I know what you, you know mean. what I mean? It's just like, like I hear so many things and I'm like, that's a really misguided way of thinking about an, a whole other gender. So like, yeah. what if we just had another perspective on this show? It'd be great. It absolutely is. Um. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't know. I was going to say, I think that was an issue with my ex too, where it's like, I, I understand that I'm a comedy girlfriend, so I get it. I get it that sometimes we're out at a thing and Scott's on a show and I'm not on a show. I don't know if I'm supposed to say his name or not, whatever. But sometimes he's on a show and I'm not. And 
when people don't know that you're a comic, you get treated like a girlfriend. And that means people don't talk to you. People yeah. ignore you. People kind of think you're nothing. And like, and, and it's okay because I'm sure I've done that to people too. I try not to judge people based on that. But I can't imagine being a dude that isn't in comedy being treated like that. Because as a man, you're not used to being put in that role. So I think it's much harder, um, especially we. it's not like he knew when he when we got into the relationship. So that's how it was going to be. Right. So and I think, you know, sometimes coming to shows and me saying like, OK, I'm going to go sit in the green room, and like have fun. Like, yeah, hope you like the show. You know, I yeah. think that's annoying. I think you want to be like, I want to go in the green room. Why can't I? But you can't. You're not yeah. inv- you're not invited. Well, I think that's something, too, that. Like, I definitely have had that in other situations, but it's, like, it does suck. Like, like if you are dating another comic, like, it really sucks when people just assume. Even, even like, as a hangout. Like, I this one thing happened where, like, um, the dude I was seeing in Milwaukee, we went on a show together. We had a show together. And I don't like to tell everyone, like, I don't like to tell other comics who I'm dating. So... They didn't know, but I was just in the car and this dude, the headliner just assumed that I was just this guy's girlfriend. Right. And then I went up and I did comedy and he was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, dude, yeah, like I was on the lineup the whole time. But he was like, just he was talking to me. He was still nice. But yeah. he was kind of like, oh, I'll be nice to this dude's girlfriend. Yeah. Like, oh, it kind of sucks. Well, I mean, I was at a comedy club over the holidays and. It was the kind of situation where you have to kind of stand behind the audience right before your name gets called so you can go through to get on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's dark, and, like, usually people don't notice that you're standing there. It's right by the green room, and it's fine. Um, And I was the host of the show, so I was about to go on stage, and one of the ladies in the audience tried to order water from me because she thought (laughs) I was a waitress. So I understand that it happens, and people aren't necessarily used to females being in charge yet. Yeah. And, like, I don't think that I definitely don't. It was just a sexist from another woman. I mean, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it wasn't a dude, like, snapping his fingers at me. It was just like, excuse me, can I get a glass of water? I'm like, you know, just, like, trying not to be like, I'm about to go up. I don't know. Like, yeah, it's just the expectations awkward. people have. They're like, but can women be funny, though? Yeah. <laughs> well, she'd probably be a good waitress, which I am. It's fine. <laughs> awesome. Um, another question I wanted to ask is, like, Okay, a few of my questions were like, how did this person propose to you? Like, was it romantic or was it? I have a joke about this. I um, won't tell it. Um, Yeah, he asked me to marry him while he was on uh, drugs. So that was fun. But that wasn't like the proposal. That was just before. Yeah, yeah, You know, when they're like, I feel like guys do this. I could be wrong, but they're like, they're trying to feel it out. You know, if you're going to say yes or not before they buy a ring. So they'll be like, well, I'll do it when I'm kind of like, but would you? Yeah, yeah, kind of something like that. So I kind of had an idea that that was coming. um, And uh, it was on Valentine's Day that he did propose. um, And it was, we like just had a nice hotel room. It was a nice proposal. It was it was, I mean, I kind of, I guess, saw something strange was coming because I was like, don't you want your Valentine? He's like, wait, I don't want it now. I'm like, why? That's so weird. Yeah. But then I guess it felt weird to give him like a fucking box of chocolates after I just got a diamond ring, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just like after dinner in our hotel room. Nothing okay. crazy. No jumbotron. That's cool. Yeah. It was nice. I got proposed to in Michigan in the, in cold rain. It was, That's cute. he's like, he's like, oh, I'll take you to uh, Michigan to look at the leaves. And it rained the whole weekend. It was 40 degrees and I was so cold <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> so I just was like bundled in layers and like I'd looked horrible. Like I didn't have any makeup on and I just had like all the layers I had brought on. That's and he's like, let's though. get married. And it was, I don't know. It was kind of weird because I think like the way that he proposed to me was like, I had been having issues with the relationship for a long time and we had been arguing a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of my issues was like, we don't do anything together. Like we don't go anywhere. Like, 
you kind of have your own life and I can like we just weren't really connecting and like he was like I know how to fix it like we'll go on this trip together and it was just kind of weird and like the ring he got me was like a really shitty ring he got at a pawn shop and it was really <laughs> ugly that's like another <laughs> it superstition was, it was really horrible that's like um, a bad one yeah because <laughs> like I don't because I'm a I'm an artist I work with my hands so I was like my whole thing and like I had been talking like I there had been a point where I wanted to marry him Mm -hmm. Where, like, I was so in love with him, and I was just like, this is great. Like, I want to be with you forever. Um, and he decided to just, like, wait another two years until things were falling apart. And, to like, try to yeah, yeah, keep yeah. You. Yeah. To try and keep me. And so I was like, I was like, it just has to be something that I can wear all the time. So I don't want any stones. Like, I just want a band. Mm -hmm. and he just didn't listen. And then to me, that was like kind of hurtful because it was just like one more thing you weren't listening to me about. Yeah. You know? I also didn't like my ring, but I. I also did. I feel like it's hard now looking back because I have a lot of negative feeling about the way our relationship ended and stuff. It's hard for me to like be honest and say that like when I first got the ring, I did like it and I did think it was beautiful and loved it. But I grew to not like it because, because I grew it, to not like the person that it was attached to. Right. And I also it was like the stone was like very high off of my finger like you're saying and it would catch on so stuff. it would catch on yeah. stuff and that was very annoying but that's also something that he didn't know picking out like I, right i told my dude like yeah because well, i had you been, have a valid yeah, excuse i was and also another fear is that when i was a little girl i had a babysitter and she was missing her ring finger because her ring got caught in like the she no. got in a car accident and her ring got caught and the paramedics had to cut her finger off to get her out of the vehicle so like that's also a thing is like yeah. one of like my childhood fears that's just like what if my ring catches on something and i can't escape yeah, a yeah, burning yeah. car and i was just like he didn't know that part, but that was always in my head, and that's part of why I like didn't want a ring that could catch on stuff. Yeah, but that's just I a think, weird fear. I also think it is just like a thing that, um, it's such a big purchase. Like, why wouldn't you just fucking figure out what she wants? Well, you know, it's just and like get her what she wants. You're gonna spend that much money on it. What do you want her to complain about it? My, it's so weird to me. Yeah, it it does seem weird. And also, like, my ex and I were both artists, so I wanted him to make my ring. Like, I was like, can you just make it? Yeah. And I had asked him to do that, and instead he was just like, I'll go to a pawn shop. And it's like, me as a person, like, I'm very sentimental, and, like, I like when objects have meaning, because, like, I'm an artist. That's yeah. important to me. Um, And just the fact that he, like, didn't get that at all. I was like, really? Like, what? Are you like literally you're not listening? Like, why are you? Have doing you ever that? heard that song Golden Ring? No. It's like a country song. It's about a it basically follows a ring and it the ring keeps going back to the pawn shop. Oh, that's it's sad as very fuck. fucking sad. <laughs> <laughs> it is very sad, but it is that I think that is a reason that people have that association with buying a ring like that at a pawn shop. It's because it represents probably someone else's failure. Yeah. Engagement, so someone's failure from nineteen eighty six according to my ring. I don't know what happened, but yeah, I mean not it could be life. something beautiful. You don't know. But it's also just like who wants that fucking energy? Just like you said, make something doesn't even have to cost anything. Yeah. Make I literally something I was like nice and make like, it out of wood. Make it mean something that doesn't have someone else's energy attached to it my stepdad made his and my mom's wedding rings out Aww. of stainless steel so that they would never rust that's awesome yeah it's really cute that's really <laughs> sweet i think it's cool when people get tattoos and stuff too but that's also just another curse yeah that's kind of i wouldn't that maybe not but like the idea that you wear this object every day and like as you like there's something ritualistic about having an object that has meaning you know like i yeah. have jewelry that i wear that is like meaningful and it comes from a place that is important to me me, so. I think that's interesting because I obviously if you know me you know this already but I like I read tarot cards I believe in like all kinds of superstition and luck not that tarot cards are superstition but I have an astrology podcast I believe in all of these kind of energetic spiritual things and jewelry is one of the things that I think women I don't know if it's because we that is how we've like adorned ourselves for centuries mm -hmm. Or I don't know what it is, but that is something I feel like I have attachment to, too. Certain necklaces I'll only wear certain places. Or, like, if I'm thinking of my mom, like, I want to wear something maybe yeah. she gave me. And I think jewelry can be really uh, meaningful and interesting that way. 
And, you know, people like carry crystals and stones and that's the same as jewelry. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a, there's something even about just like having that connection with the piece of jewelry. Like, oh, this reminds me of my mom. And then you kind of like feel like your mom's with you a little bit there, even though she's not. Yeah. Like there, there is like a comforting feeling about wearing things that have meaning. Um, And I think it's important. Like I put on this jacket today. Uh, and it's, I love this jacket and I bought it with one of the first, when I got paid cash for a big commission yeah. in art, you know, it right out of art feeling. school. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, this is my boss jacket. You yeah, know? for sure. <laughs> Did you, um, give your ring back? Oh yeah. No, yeah. I don't have it. I, I don't did have too. it anymore. I do. However, the Valentine's day before he proposed to me, he gave me another ring and it is a silver ring with a lion on it. Um, and I ha- I want to sell it because the same thing, it like has this meaning and it's just like in my jewelry box, but I don't know how eBay works. I'm going to give it to my dad and have him do it. But yeah, it does like when I open my jewelry box, I'm like, fuck, that thing's still there. But when he gave it to me, like I, I felt like he heard me and it felt really meaningful mm-hmm. and it felt really good. And so like it was harder for me to like get rid of that because it did feel like this beautiful moment or this like, like a moment where I was very in love with him. You know? Yeah. I have a necklace. I actually don't know if I have it because I think I may have put it in a Goodwill um, bag, which somebody just found a diamond necklace at Goodwill. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I put it in a bag. I don't know. I had a similar thing where I was like, I don't really want to get rid of this. This was like a good time in our relationship. Yeah. I need I to know. get rid of it for myself. Like, I just don't want to have it around. Yeah. But it was still just like, it's a weird thing to kind of keep around. It is weird, like... I don't know if you felt this when you were dating after, but like, were there ever things like when you were dating new people that you had to like watch yourself or like, like you're like, Oh, I don't want to fall into this pattern Mm -hmm. or, you know? Oh yeah. I think that's common anytime you go through a big breakup, but especially when you've like just broken off a commitment to someone, I think there is, at least for me, this want to connect with people right away. Yeah. And so there's like a lot of like just putting yourself out there on any, in any, in any way, you know, like through comedy or on Tinder or, you know, online or whatever. You just like have a need for that kind of connection, but you also don't want to be a burden on your friends. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it, the trap for me is like codependence. So, (laughs) so like trying to not fall into that pattern, like going on a first date with someone and they don't want to like hang out the whole night, you know, and me just being like, they don't love me. It's like, yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't know know you you at all. Like (laughs) calm down, you know? And I think, so I think that is like a Why are we not thing to best at. friends after hanging out for three hours? Yeah. It's just crazy. Don't you know I'm going through a breakup? You're supposed to be here for me. Like stuff like that yeah. where it, I think it, it is really hard. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I have some stock sort of questions that okay. I like to go through. Um, do you believe that romantic love can actually last a lifetime? Is that something? You yes, I do. I believe that it also takes work. I believe that... Um, it's kind of like the opposite of depression or I guess the same where, uh, it takes, sometimes it takes you training yourself to remind yourself of all the things you love about a person and not just like right now when I left my house and my boyfriend was cleaning and domestic labor is like a common thing that people fight about in relationships. And I'm very lucky because my boyfriend listens to me and when I tell him I'm frustrated about having to do this or that, he does do it. And that's really nice. And I don't, I don't tell him that I don't, you know, there's a lot of times when I forget that and I'm just like, Oh, he's cleaning for once. And it's like, no, you need to recognize that he, he listened to you. Yeah. And, and that helps you stay in love with a person instead of thinking the negative side of like, Oh, he's just doing it because I asked. And it's like, no, he's doing it because you asked like, why, 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 why ask then? Something that I've learned, not just from dog trainers, uh, but also relationship people, is that giving your partner like positive reinforcement when they are hearing you and then they are like doing something nice and just like taking time out to like thank them and be like, hey, thank you for hearing me or like thank you for helping me with this is so much 
more impactful than like getting upset with them. Yeah, it's not so, like two to seven, I think, is the ratio of what you're supposed to say. To yeah. Keep your relationship happy, right? Yeah, for sure. So, so it's two like two negative things every seven positive. Yeah. And like negative things need to be like corrective and not based in um like who the person is, but more based on behaviors. Like, hey, it hurts my feelings when you do this. Can you you know, like yeah. that kind of thing? Um and I'm like, oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's important to do for yourself, too, to keep your mind positive about your partner. And not just not just in, like, romantic things, but in friendships and stuff, too. For sure. Where like, you have to be like, God, I know this fucking Facebook post was, like, so annoying to me, but you're my friend. And I remember the time that you were there for me when I was crying outside of a bar or whatever, you know. <laughs> like, Classic drunk white girl crying. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So it's like. I think important to do that. And I mean, every, every religion, every philosophy, every therapist, every fucking yoga class is telling you to remember to be grateful and remember those positive things. So remember to be nice to proof. people. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Okay. A couple more things. Um, do your, do your parents have like a good relationship? Like, is that a, like a solid foundation for you? Or did you have to kind of learn things from that? That's an interesting question. My um, my dad died in 2009 and my mom does not have a new partner. Okay. Um, but, and so I was pretty young when my dad died. So yeah, that's I, very young. Yeah. How, you were 20? Yeah, 2021. 20, um, so same, around the same time I got so engaged. <laughs> so your ex knew your dad? Um, He met him. So was that hard is like, like breaking up with a partner that you felt knew a piece about you? Uh, he also had his dad pass too. So I think while we were together. So I think that too, I met his dad and I think that's probably hard for both of us. But I, I don't, my dad was very sick when he met my ex and I don't okay. know if he would remember him at all. Okay. Um, But my dad had dementia and so oh, for like, was the he later- a much older no, well, yeah, he died young, but for I, he was a lot older than my mom. I mean, he was twelve years older than my mom, so he would be in his late seventies now. But that's still not that old. A lot no, of people to live, get dementia. Yeah. That's really young. So he got it pretty young, um, which we suspect probably due to brain injury. Um, so probably not genetic. So was that's he probably why he like in a car accident. Yeah, at sixteen. Okay. So oh wow, we think that and. You know, the my dad was born in the 40s, so the record keeping isn't that good. So we don't know everything. <laughs> but he had a car accident when he was young and had dementia for most of my teenage years. Okay. And I think that we didn't even catch it until I was in the middle of high school. Oh, no. So I think that some of the kind of chaos in my house was more related to his illness than we recognized at the time. Okay. Um, but my parents still did have a really good relationship. My mom, like, bless her heart, like, just stuck with him till the end, like, made sure he had the best care and, like, really did, um, I don't know, she did great things. She went and saw him every day and... I don't know if that is like necessarily love or romance, but it is just like your duty as a human being to You've like made a commitment yeah. to your partner. And yeah. like even if even if she had wanted to start dating someone else while my dad was sick, I don't think anyone would have judged her for that. Yeah, I just think she didn't have the emotional capacity or the time to do it. I don't um, think you can take you can devote yourself so fully to another person's care and also find, I mean, it's difficult enough to find time to yourself for even self care Yeah, to like bathe and feel good. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that that definitely gives me more of like a, I guess, romanticized view on love and relationships where Mm -hmm. I'm like, even though my parents definitely didn't always get along and like, definitely there were fights and chaos in our house. They still like stuck together and, I mean, of course it all ends in tragedy, you know? It, it, Best case if, scenario. If love is forever, you're still going to be sad, you know? Yeah, it doesn't for matter. Sure. But I, yeah, I think so. I had a pretty good example. That's really beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's so <laughs> sweet. I mean, it's also, like, there's a lot of other like weird stuff that is not sweet, but we'll keep it positive. Okay. You know, I, mean, I like, you know, when you, my dad's called me by my mom's name on accident a lot. Cause because he, was he, has an, he had an issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, so that kind of stuff is like, okay, like psychologically very weird as well. Yeah. You but know? you like, 
when that was happening, you you didn't really know he had also. Oh, I knew at that okay. point. I knew. So okay. it was like, OK, like, well, just be nice. But please don't touch me. You know. Like. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like fine. Yeah, because like you never happened. Like, oh, Nothing yeah, weird yeah, yeah. ever happened. That's so. really yeah. That's funny, but also terrifying. Yeah, cool, mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. Um, one of my other questions is, um, who's the hardest person in your life to love? Oh man, I hope he doesn't listen. My brother, <laughs> <laughs> he might be listening. Um, I do love him, but I just we have such like opposite views on like politically and on the world. And oh, it's interesting. so hard sometimes to Does he wear a cowboy hat and spurs. No, he lives in Florida. <laughs> we live on the opposite coast. He just um, waves the Confederate flag. <laughs> and you're just like, what is this? He's not that far. He's not that far. Right. But okay, cool. cool he's cool. definitely, um, it's just hard for me because I'm like, you're young. Don't you get it? And I think, Sometimes, especially in our current climate, it's hard to avoid those topics of conversation. Yeah. So when we get together, things come out and then it turns into like it just it devolves it de- because yeah. we only know how to fight like little kids. Yeah. We, we've never had an adult relationship until now. Inter- how so, much younger is your younger brother? He's older than me. Oh, sorry. Four years older. But, <laughs> he, but, you know, we I moved out at 18. He moved out at 18. So we've never really had to have fights as adults. Got it. We never lived together or or spent that much time together as adults. So I think, and I do love him. And I hope if he's listening, he knows that, um, you know, it's okay. That's good. That's sweet. Despite who you voted for. (laughs) Oh, perfect. Okay. So this is the last question I'm going to ask. What? Scare. So something, this is kind of like the last question I like to ask everyone is mm-hmm. like, what scares you in love? Like when you kind of first feel yourself and maybe you felt this with your first boyfriend, like, did you have any like specific fears or do you have any fears now about the relationship? And like, how do you feel about it? I guess is what I'm asking. Um, Like, I guess obviously being such a codependent person, my fear is like obviously losing the person. And um, I think, like, that's what makes me cry in movies. That's what makes me, like, feel upset when I think about my dog. Is like, yeah. it one day you're not going to be here, and I'm going to have to go on without you, and I don't know how I'm going to do that. And it's like, I know that I can, you know. Right. I just don't know, like, what that looks like. I don't know what healing yourself. I mean, I've lost a dog before. I've lost a dad before. I know that I can go on. It's just like looking at something that or someone or anything that you love so much and thinking like, oh, one day I'm going to have to be without you. That's heartbreaking. But it's also like sometimes you choose to be without them, you know, like later. So it's like it's just a very weird thing to be afraid of. Um, But, yeah, it's like, you know, that's why those uh, military coming home videos Ever watch oh my those? god! The That's ones with the are... dogs or with people? It, any of them. They're like <laughs> the dogs so always emotional really like... because you know that they just came back and they're safe now, and now you don't have to worry. You know, it's like yeah, it's so emotional. It's so crazy. That stuff makes me cry. You know what else always makes me cry? The Budweiser commercial where the dude raises the little horse. Did you ever see this? It was like on the a Super Bowl years like years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw and he like raises the horse from a baby horse, and then. He, like, sets him free to be the Clydesdale that runs in the parade. And then, like, he runs in the parade. He's like, oh, he doesn't remember me. And, like, the man turns to leave. And then the horse sees him and gallops after him. I was like, I didn't realize a man and horse's relationship could make me cry so hard in 30 seconds. I know. (laughs) And that, I mean, I feel that way about my dog where I'm just like, well, and did you see Black Panther? Yes. There is a spoiler coming. So fast forward 30 seconds. But when she jumps in front of the rhino. Yes. Yes. And it's like the same kind of thing where it's like just like watching that animal like lick her face. And it's like, oh, man, like that's exactly how I feel with my dog. You know, sometimes when I'm coming home and my boyfriend's walking my dog because he's a good boyfriend. Guys, if you're listening, you can always do stuff like that. What a sweetheart. Um, And my dog will recognize me down the street and start like jumping up and down. (laughs) And it's just like I can't, you know. Yeah. That's true love. The truest love. 
Um, do you want to, so we usually close, um, you can give all your handles or not, but do you want to list just a few things that you love about your boyfriend? Oh yeah, I would love to. Um, oh gosh. I wonder if he's going to listen. Now I'm embarrassed about who's listening. Um, <laughs> uh, my boyfriend, God, he's just the funniest person. He makes me laugh so much uh, more than anyone else ever could. He's the funniest man in comedy. Um, what else? He's just so sexy and so sweet, and he just does so much for me. I can't even. If I start, I'll start crying. It's fine. You can cry if you want to. I won't judge here. I've cried on That's this podcast fine. before. He picked me up from the airport, and he came inside. That he's like that kind of guy. Aww. Yeah. So it's he's a good one. That's adorable. Yeah. That gives me hope. Yeah. They're, it's a, he, they're out there, I promise. Cool. Well, um, go ahead and list all of your I know you have a bunch oh, yeah. of podcasts. I have you wanna so list much. them? Um, you know what? I think check out What's Your Sign podcast and the Chatterbox Comedy Podcast. And then if you're looking for me, LisaChanu.com or at A S I L N O U X on social media. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. Thank um, you for having me. Yeah, this is really fun. You guys can follow. Oh, let's see. I wrote down all my handles because I forget to say them. <laughs> uh, I just leave the podcast. <laughs> Do it. Uh, my, You can find me on Instagram at Sundress Comic and at Andrea Loves Everybody. Um, if you have any comments, questions, ideas for a podcast, go ahead and email me at Andrea Loves Everybody at gmail.com. And follow Oversharing Comedy on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Paula V. Ganonelin and I are starting a new show. Um, we're getting that kind of going right now. Oh, fun. Um, and then, I think that's everything. This is really fun. Thanks yeah, for coming awesome. and hanging Thank out. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Bye.